you've had so many different uh, successful collaborations. Um, you know, I'm thinking about uh, uh, Living La Vida Loca with uh, Ricky Martin. Um, how did that all come about? Did he kind of dis- did he know about your Latin heritage before he? Not really. He, you know, he was an entertainer. He was, you know, in my friends uh, had found him um, and and booked and cast him. My friend um, Debbie Ohanian was the first one to notice him because she she followed uh, Latin music and Latin celebrities. And she also, you know, she saw him on, uh, I think it was General Hospital. Mm. And then she brought him to the attention of another close friend, Richard J. Alexander, and he booked him in Le Mis on Broadway. Okay. And so at this point, he started having a hit uh, that was uh, produced and written by Robbie Rosa mm-hmm. um, called Maria. Uh, in Spanish, and 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 really broke through. And he, and I saw a clip of him, his performance on the streets of Argentina. There was a hundred thousand people showed up and tied up, you know, Buenos Aires. Wow. And I, I saw the, you know, those clips, and I said, Oh my God, this guy could be huge. And at that point, I had moved back to Miami, and it kind of um, after the earthquake in uh, in '94, mm-hmm. and I. Um, you know, was kind of I, I was I was getting back in touch with my Latin heritage. Mm. So I was going a lot to you know salsa clubs to da- to dance, and I was going to listen to artists like Albita, uh, the famous uh, restaurant called Centro Vasco, Bas- Centro Vasco, and uh, on Eighth Street. Um, and um, I, I I you know I started taking you know. I, I took uh, Steven Tyler there one night and everything, and so I started getting into all of this, and then there was a artist that a friend of mine was producing, a friend of mine from high school, Rafael the Heel, and he was the one that wrote, um, you know, the early um, um, Miami Sound Machine hits oh, okay. with Joe Galdo. Right. And they had written it for, you know, another artist, and then uh, they, they put Gloria Stefan's voice on it. Uh-huh. And that's how that happened. Anyway, he was producing a, an artist named Roscoe Martinez. And so I started co-producing it with him for fun. And, uh, you know, because I thought I could help him. He, you know, he was, you know, really trying to get this artist to go forward. And we sort of started coming up with, with, with the sound. And I asked uh, Robbie Rosa to come and, uh, you know, I, I had already started working with Ricky. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, uh, Somehow, it all come, came together on Ricky's record. I used the same musicians from Roscoe's record, and oh. um, it, it was a stepping stone towards that that sound that I think changed the course of Latin music. Because you know, one of the things that you know that it was an innovation. We we were the first to to record and mix a record all in the, in what they call in the box. Mm-hmm. On Pro Tools, the, you know, oh. the beginnings of Pro Tools, and that we were the first to go all the way to number one with a song that was, you know, 100% non-analog. I didn't know and that. And that, that fact made it into the Wall Street Journal. No kidding. And, um, um, and so one of the, the, the things about that, you know, that new sound of digital, it had a kind of metallic sound, and it was, we also, uh, to compensate for that metallic sound, we we kind of um, um, made it drier than Latin music had ever been, which was more like um, like the early beginnings. Of, well, it's more like like R and B and dance music, where things were very you know uh, deconstructed and 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 you could hear every everything in your front of your face instead of. The, the kind of records before it made it sound as though they were in a hall or with a lot of echo or with a lot of, you know, uh, corny kind of, uh, that kind of Euro pop sound. Right, right. And so we changed, we changed that with Ricky. We've got his fa- his voice right in everybody's face. It really worked. Mm. And, um, and so, you know, from that moment on, you know, a lot of, you know, all, nothing has ever sounded like it used to sound. Huh. And so, also, the, uh, songwriting wise, you know, I brought all of my experience with Aerosmith and Bon Jovi and Kiss 
Alice Cooper, Joan Jett, you know, to the table, creating arena rock songs with a Latin flavor. That's an interesting way to describe it. Wow. And, you know, yeah, I was... so, you know there was another influence, very strong influence. At, right at that moment, Frank Sinatra died. Oh. So Frank Sinatra's music was coming out of the airwaves, and so we decided, and we were, you know, all of a sudden into this Rat Pack idea, uh-huh. and also th- this Latin Elvis concept that we had for him. Oh, that's and interesting. And so uh, we we put that into, you know, the songs as well. So there was a swing aspect wow. to it. So the verses were more like that, and then the choruses were, you know, all out, you know, kind of rock um, anthems. That's interesting. And so that, you know, with horns, because horns had fallen out of favor, we sort of brought horns back. Mm. Wow, that's interesting. You know, I never even considered that, but when you when you mention it, I can hear that. And, you know, I was just thinking about the idea that it, it's a mixture of English and Spanish, the the title. I mean, did that? Did you think about that? Yeah, you know, that was of... actually uh, because the, his manager, Angela Medina, um, thought there was a market in you know radio stations that were doing songs that were kind of going back and forth between English and Spanish. She said, "Well, what if you do one song that you know it's kind of both?" Mm-hmm. But, I mean, so if you really look at "Living La Vida Loca," there really is very little Spanish in it. <laughs> When we presented it to the record company, the executive, uh, you know, the t- one of the top executives came back to me and said, well, could you write that song in English now? <laughs> I said, it, <laughs> it is, is in English. <laughs> and in fact, when the first ads came out, he insisted that underneath Live in La Vida Loca in parentheses, it said, live in the crazy life. Really? So if you go back in billboards, it's like you're, we were head, scratching our heads like, come on now. Anyone who's ever gone to Pollo Loco knows what the word loco is. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly a, you know exotic language, is it? You know, that particular song, I mean, we use words that sound like Spanish, but, you know, skin the color of mocha. Uh-huh, right. You know? Yeah. By the way, mocha is not a, it's like an American or an English term. Is it really? You know? <laughs> yeah, so we funny. don't say that in Spanish. <laughs> That's but funny. But it sounded like Spanish. So, you know, it took, it, it took me like three days to really work out about the right combination of, of sounds and words. Wow. You know, which was, you know, that's pretty much the longest I had ever worked on a song before. Really? That was before I started uh, working in theater. <laughs> uh-huh. Wow. And these days, I can't write a song, you know, it takes me three, four days to write a proper song. 